Okay, babe. Okay. Repeat after me. You deserve good sex. You are delicious. You are nutritious. You are fabulous. Your vagina spits nothing but champagne. You taste expensive. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die. Hey gorgeous, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kapana Shimange and this is how I do things. The show where you send me your questions and I let you know how I would do things and I can take it as entertainment, use it as advice. Take it, don't take it, use it. Don't use it at all. Listen, do what you will with it. Honestly, do whatever you want with it. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because no, me, ek, ha, ha, ha. I'm no professional. I'm no professional whatsoever. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Honey, today we are talking about an issue that I've seen in so many comments where it's just like, you know what, Kopano, I want to have good sex. I want to be in the sex thing. I want my husband to enjoy me and I want to enjoy my husband, but I have so many questions. I don't even enjoy sex anymore. Like, I don't even actually really, I feel like sex could be so much more than what it is right now, but I don't know what it is and I don't know how to make it better. We've spoken about feeling sexy and whether you're good in bed, but today I want to talk to you guys about sexual confidence. What is it? How does it affect our sex lives? And once you get a grip of it, honey, can it increase your sex drive, your libido? Can it make you better in bed? And most of all, will it help you get to that climax that you have been waiting for? that good loving that you want you and your hubby to get to. So if you've been wondering, what is it that's been keeping me from having good sex or can I have even better sex than what I've been having? This is for you. Starts with number one, get out of your head. The number one thing that women do a lot is that we think about our bodies. We think about what we're doing. We think about how we're doing it all the time. We worry about how do I look? How do I feel? Do I look strange? Am I making an idiot out of myself? We are in our brains all the time while we are having that good loving with the man. You always just in your mind thinking, should I do that? Shouldn't I do that? Does it feel good? Does it not feel good? Mm, I wonder if, what are we eating tonight? <laughs> These are all things that we tend to think to ourselves while we are in the moment with our man. Get out of your brain and into the loving is the number one step of actually having better sex and increasing your sexual confidence is just getting out of your brain. Stop overthinking it so much and start being in the moment. Number two, your body actually has absolutely nothing to do with your sexual skill. Nothing. So no matter what you think about your body, no matter how it is shaped, no matter what the size, if you are short, if you are tall, if you've got a stomach, you don't have a stomach, you got boobs, you don't have boobs, you're not an arch your back, you are flexible, non-flexible, honey, nothing. Your body type, your body shape has nothing to do with your sexual confidence. However, you having a positive body image of yourself does speak to it a little bit you feeling comfortable with yourself in your own skin does affect how confident you are and how confident you aren't in the bed. So the first part of building sexual confidence is actually just building that confidence about your body, that this is mine. Whether you think it's perfect or not, does not matter, it's mine, I love it. This is the bada bing, bada bang, the va va, the vom vom that has been given to me and I'm gonna love every single corner of it. And number three, sexual confidence has absolutely nothing to do with your skill level. You'd think that if you have a book, the Kama Sutra down to a T, you know all 101 positions given to you by Cosmopolitan back in 1990. It has nothing to do with sexual confidence. You can know every single position that there is. You can do every single one, but it still won't speak to your sexual skill. And sexual skill speaks to, does not speak to having great sexual confidence. Those are two different things. You can be sexually confident with very little skill and very little experience. 
So what is sexual confidence and how do we actually raise it? And this just leads me to number four, believing that you deserve good sex. Mm. Now that I think about it, you do. That's the thing. As women, we're always thinking about what does my man want? Is he happy? Can I make him get there? You know, we're always thinking about what the man wants, the man's experience and giving to the man the entire time. Being told that women were created to give men sexual pleasure without finishing that thought, which is backed up by the Bible, that men were created to give women sexual pleasure too. We were meant to please each other. The man was supposed to find pleasure in our breast and we were supposed to find pleasure in our man. We are to drink from the waters together, honey. So it's not just a thing of us as women just being sexual tools. It is a thing that we as women deserve to be given. We deserve to have good sex. And a lot of the times they will tell you that if you want to have your orgasm, honey, you must go fetch it. Yes, you must go fetch it. But it's also your husband's job to know how to give it to you as well. It's important. It can't only be your responsibility to have good sex. It is both your responsibility. When you as a couple got together and made the commitment, that commitment was for you to both be happy. A man's sexual organs were created to give to a woman. The same way a woman's sexual organs were, were created so they can hug and caress and accept from a man. You deserve good sex, period. Number five to help you get that sexual confidence is just for you to grow the balls, to tell him what you want. Oh, this is such a difficult one. I've struggled with that one where your man just sits there and tells you in a Batman voice, what do you want? And then you have to tell him what you actually want. If you want your man to go down on you, tell him. If you want him to scoot over to the left, tell him. If you want him to bend you over and spank you on the bum, tell him. It takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of bollocks to be able to tell your man exactly what you want. And sometimes it makes us feel like, oh, I'm a, I'm, I'm, ooh, I'm a sexual beast. He's going to judge me. What is he going to say? What if it actually doesn't sound that sexy? What if it's actually boring? What if, and a lot of the times we say, I don't know, what do you want? Nonsense, nonsense. If you want your man to just grab the bum, grab the bum like it is his, like a steak, tell him <laughs> that is what you want. It takes so much for us to be able to accept the sex thing and have confidence in sex, especially if we grew up in these conservative backgrounds, Christian, it may be cultural, whatever it is, to accept that we deserve good sex or to even try and have these sexual fantasies and to even confess that what I dream of is you sucking my toes. What I dream of is you kissing the lower part of my back. You know, I want you to lick my back. I want you to take an ice cube and, and run it down my spine. I want you to, to twist my nipples. Those are things that we just think of and we're just like, we immediately judge ourselves. But if you want to grow that sexual confidence, write it down. Be honest with yourself. Whenever you see it, whenever you get that, on, that, that inspiration, write it down and tell your man whether he asks you what you want or not, tell him. Number six is to know how your culture and your religion and your upbringing plays into your ideas of what sex is and what it isn't. Many of us grew up thinking that sex is this really bad, terrible thing that we shouldn't be having or else we're going to die in the pits of hell. And then you get married and now you're supposed to be able to give your man what he wants and you still have this thinking that I'm going to die in the pits of hell if I enjoy sex like a porn star. But you really do need to enjoy sex. You know, the Bible tells you to enjoy it, honey. But it's still difficult for us to accept it. So think about it, go through it, go through your, your journal, write about what it is in your upbringing that has really stuck with you and is making it really hard for you to change your perspective about sex. Because it is important for you to acknowledge it in order for you to work through it. Because that is some of the biggest barriers that we have to increasing our sexual confidence. What sexual confidence is, is us 
knowing that we deserve it and us having good sex. That's why it has nothing to do with your body and it has nothing to do with your skill. It just has to do with your acceptance of good sex and going after it. And sometimes how we were brought up and some of the cultural references that we have to sex keeps us from transcending and getting to that level of really good, sweaty, spankful, luscious, delicious, nutritious, vivacious, loving. And finally, number seven, shift your perspective. This all leads to you believing that you deserve to have good sex. Find out what the barriers are, whether they're cultural, whether they're, it is your body, whether it is your upbringing, whether it is the fact that you just don't know what you want. Acknowledge those things and then change your perspective and your attitude around the things that are keeping you from believing that you have and that you deserve good sex in your life. Once you're able to work through those barriers and change your perspective about those things, that's when you start to believe that you deserve it. And that's when you can actually start to work towards the things that work for you. This also means being able to understand what your barriers are, what your boundaries are, and being able to set them for yourself and accept the ones that someone else sets for you. Many of us think that we just need to be subservient and that we should just bend over and take whatever is given to us. But if there's certain things in sex that make you feel uncomfortable, talk about them, set boundaries. What makes you uncomfortable? What do you want to try? What are you not willing to try? What certain things about sex make you feel violated? Because it does happen. Set boundaries, accept boundaries. But it all starts with you believing that you deserve good sex and changing your perspective around the things that are barriers to you believing that. And finally, number eight. Once you know all of these things, what happens to you and your partner? Having good sexual communication between the two of you is important. It is it is it's imperative that the two of you know how to talk about sex. If there are certain boundaries that you have, work through them with your man. If there are certain things that make you feel uncomfortable, certain things that make you feel violated, even if it is with your husband, talk about those boundaries so that you can get comfortable about sex. If you're genuinely feeling bored about sex right now and you want to feel revitalized about it, what is the boundary and what is the barrier that has built that feeling around sex and how can you change it? How can you add some excitement? Because once you start to communicate, you can start to experiment, you can start to work within your boundaries, you can start to break down walls that are keeping you from having that good sex that you deserve. So work on that communication, making it nice and open, so you can tell them what you want, tell them what you don't want, and tell them how you want to get it, and also how you want to give it. All right, my honey, I hope that you enjoyed that one. I did as well, raising your sexual confidence. I know that I have one or two things to work through. Let me know in the comment section down below which one stood out the most for you. But until next time, beautiful people, thank you so much for watching and thank you for sharing. I'm Kabana Shemang and this is How I Do Things. Hey gorgeous and thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing to my channel and continue to binge watch. Until later days. Mm -hmm. Toodles.